G'day folks, time to get stuck into the new aquaponics system. Not this one here. This one's here is growing nicely, but it is getting late in the afternoon and I need to knock off some bits and pieces on the new system. So today we'll be chopping the top off the moving bed bio, finishing off the holes in the moving bed bio and the radial flow settler. And hopefully by the end of today, or maybe tomorrow, we'll have some water in the system and give it a bit of a wet run. So before I drill the exit port for the radial flow settler, I want to flip the lid on the moving bed bioreactor. So we'll set the cameras up and get a chopping. So this drum here, is going to get pretty much all the same treatment as the other one did yesterday. That's for the pilot hole and the jigsaw. So I'm just going to freehand the line, take a little bit more care because the cut did wander a bit. And I think that was more due to the, um, the plate on the jigsaw. Just getting caught up in that rim there because these rims aren't molded nice and level all the way around and i was following it yeah it led me astray in a few places but such is but should meet up nicely with this one here there we go and drill our pilot right on the line well, it's a thick section of the wall by the feel of it so here we go hey buddy you might want to move so there we go, I was in a bit of a hurry yesterday because I left filming so late and today's cut is much nicer and that lid fits on there perfectly so I'll move him over here so we can work out where the pipe that joins these two barrels go. I'm thinking I want the um, exit pipe to be down from the top just to allow for any backup that may occur, I don't think it will but I'm thinking if we drill there that's going to give us roughly two and a half centimetres is there. So the top of the pipe will be there and the base will be roughly round about there. So the easiest way to mark these out is from the base. And that hole is roughly being drilled at 70 or 760 mil, which is a tad under 30 inches. And on this one here, there we go. That is 760 millimetres. And on the other end, the outlet, I'm going to do pretty much all the same thing, but I might drill the two holes first. There we go. And again, that lock doesn't work too well on this one. Just a bit of a heads up, these things, because they're molded, you have a seam on either side. So the seam on this one is just here. So I place the mark, it's about 30 mm off to one side, but it's easy enough just to come over here and say I'm going to drill there on the seam and that means just on the other side here we can do exactly the same thing coming up roughly 76 mil there it is 76 mil from the seam and that's it there that's where we drill and we know that those two holes will be directly opposite each other so we have an inlet and an outlet hopefully we won't get stuff all over the place again might actually use my noggin and drill this one from the inside and that way, all the swarf will, most of the swarf will stay on the inside. There we go. And on this one here, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to start the pilot hole on this side. Then we'll go to the inside and we'll drill it out from the inside and catch all that swarf. Sometimes I can use my noggin. And the blade stayed on again. And just to clean these guys up again, I'm just going to use the deburring tool. on the same on the inside. This one's very messy. There we go. There's a few bits on the inside there that I'll just take off with a craft knife later. They shouldn't pose an issue. So it's a new day, had to go and pick up a few bits and pieces, some supplies I needed, like some more one inch or 25 mil pipe, and also some new glue to glue a few of the fittings together. Uh, just to bring you up to speed, these barrels are just ready now for their base drains to go in and a bleed off line this one here will be going roughly there on the radial flow settler. We'll get to that today. We'll also be using this cuff to join these two barrels together and installing these guys, which is what I need the glue for. And time permitting, we'll end up getting this drain plumbed into the radial flow settler. Uh, just a bit of a quick heads up. I've just added a module to the guide that looks at a few ideas on making these guys. Not only that, how to use the glue to glue these bits and pieces together 
and also a um, option where you can yeah just fit them together and so you can reuse the parts later but it makes them water and air tight so check that out if you have the guide i suppose i should set the camera up and stop flapping the gums so this is the mocked up bleed off line for the radial flow settler we won't worry about that now. Uh, what we will set up is this one here. This is the base drain for all the muck from the radial flow settler. So what we need to do is work out at what height we need to drill the hole down the bottom there for the uni seal. First off is to measure the outside diameter of this pipe. You're gonna to have to trust me. It is roughly 34 millimeters. So I know that um, it's 17 millimeters to the center of this pipe from the top edge there. Next. We pop the drain into the drum, situate it where it's going to be roughly. Mark the top there. So now I can measure up from there to a mark on the rim and that gives me 705 millimetres or roughly 27 and 3 quarter inches by the look of it. So marking it on the outside and drilling from the outside is a lot easier. So we're coming down 7... 705 millimeters which is just there now the diameter of the pipe is 34 millimeters so to drill a hole in the center of that pipe i had to come down half which is 17 millimeters so i marked that and now we're ready to drill out the uni seal hole so i'm using a one inch or 25 millimeter pipe here so i need the same uni seal now the holes for these require a 44 millimeter or inch and three quarter hole and easy enough just to zap it straight through And we put the lock on the drill again. There we go, fairly easy. Just clean up the outside and the inside using a deburrer. Away we go. So I've used the same process to mark out and drill the drain for the moving bed bioreactor. There we go, nice smooth hole. Clean out the bits from inside. Should be right to go. So the two drain holes are right for the uni seals and pipe work. I just need to do a drain off line here. It's pretty much all this here with an added snorkel on the inside. And what that will do is that will take out the majority of the water, probably down to around about here in the radial flow settler, deliver it into the sump. So when we clean it, we're only removing this much dirty water. So this one here I've already worked out it needs to be this high. So roughly around about there. If I am correct, yep, a little bit lower. That is where I need to drill. One thing I would like to point out that these little bumps with the uni seals don't matter at all. Whereas, you know, a normal fitting, you would have issues with little lumps and bumps like that, creating a nice watertight seal. But yeah, not a worry in the world for these uni seals. I'm just gonna drill this one in situ, but we'll put this tray here to try and catch all the swarf. Pretty easy, really. There we go. Well, that didn't catch much, but I'll tidy it up later. These barrels now have all the holes drilled and are pretty much all right to go. I will give them one more flush out with the hose uh, just to make sure all that conditioner is out of there. And I might try to trim down some of these fat lips that are just stopping the um, lids from sitting properly as well. I might do that first. And then we can uh, give the fish tank a final hose out, level off the site there and we can start plumbing this up. I think I might do that um, after lunch. Back soon, folks. So we're back from lunch and I've cleaned out the barrels as well as the fish tank and also trimmed down those sides so the lids sit nicely now. Just on top of the fish tank, I've put some shade cloth nice and clean in there just to stop any leaves and other bits and pieces falling in until we get the hoop house set up. I've actually got the netting, it arrived today. So that'll um, happen fairly soon. Now, as for putting this pipe on here, well, um, I've decided that it's going to be a pretty easy job, really. I'll come over and show you. I'll grab my clipboard, actually. So what I've done is literally a back of the envelope um, calculations. I've got two identical uh, twin 45s fitting, 45 degree fittings here, because in Australia we don't have the nice curved 90 degrees that some folks do around the world in this style of pipe. So what I've basically done is worked out how far the pipe goes into these fittings, and then the distance between the end of there and the start of the pipe in the next and done a couple of calculations and worked out I need roughly around about 700 meters, meters, millimeters of pipe or 70 centimeters. So I'm just gonna cut it there. I'm actually going to do it up under the house in the big saw 
just because it's a lot faster and gives me a nice even cut. And on the end of that, on the other end, we're going to have this fitting here. That will end up going here and running through that wall there and there'll be another one on the other side as the upflow. Now this pipework here, uh, once that's installed and I know roughly where I need to cut here, I will be coming across here and cutting off a section and then I will be gluing this onto the base and that top will have one of the rubber cuffs that join it together, that way I don't need this height to be absolutely perfect. Pretty easy. Uh, to, before I do that though, what I thought I would do is set up at least this radial flow filter just with the pipe out the top and these ones here because once I get that pipe work through and connected onto the fish tank it's going to be a little bit ornery to work with then I can do the uh, moving bed bio later. So to begin with we'll put in the draw off line which basically takes the bulk of the clean water out to the sump tank just using my little um, PVC shears here and just cutting off a section. It's roughly around about 60 mil long. And what I've just done is just taken the edge off the corner there to make it easier to push through. And of course we need a uni seal. So the uni seal goes in like this. And I'm going to use just another a pressure fitting here just to push it through. So I'll just poison the end of this pipe using the water in the drum from the clean out. And we will try and push it through it's fairly easy, give it a bit of a wiggle, there we go, and that gives us enough pipe on both sides so we can attach our fittings. Fitting on the outside here will actually be glued, and this fitting here will make use of this hole already in the pipe, and that pipe down there will end about there and will draw out the bulk of the clean water so we're not wasting a lot when we clean the settler. Uh, now the bottom fitting. Now this bottom fitting is just a bit of an extension, uh, just so I don't really need to um, know the exact length of the pipe work. So anyway, um, we'll get this one ready to go in. Actually no, it feels like that one's right to go in. Grab a uni seal though. Grab some water from inside. And pop the uni seal in down the bottom. Might just turn this one over and give him a go this way. There we go. And we just need a little bit for the um, pump fitting that will be glued to the outside. That should be enough. And there we have it. And while I'm here, I'm just going to attach that drain fitting as well, so I don't have to keep worrying about it. Get it out of the way. So that's all in neatly. Now we can get this line in here, cut up under the house. Before I do that, I'll quickly install the drain pipe into the top of the radial flow settler. So we're right to go on that last uni seal now. And just to show you, I have popped in a section of timber inside just to brace the barrel open so that uni seal doesn't push through. Also on this pipe here, just to show you, I have marked in from the end roughly 210 millimeters or eight inches, just so I know when this comes through the uni seal, I know it's in as far as it needs to go. So we'll pop this on its side and I'll just grab some lubrication from the other barrel and we'll have a crack at pushing this through and hopefully the uni seal behaves. So these longer lengths of pipe do make it a little bit easier to push in. There we go, I think we got the start of it. There we go. So I can take this timber out now. And try and keep moving this in until we see that black line, which is just about there. I think that's far enough. And just to show you, this fitting goes on here. And that's pretty much, well, pretty close to the center of the radial flow settler. So first off this morning, we're gluing up the drain bits and pieces for the settler and the bioreactor, and also the overflow for the fish tank. To glue these pipes up, it's pretty basic. All you have to do is prime the PVC, not only to get the dirt off, but it makes the surface of the PVC um, receptive to the glue itself. So I give everything a bit of a wipe down with that using rubber gloves because this stuff is pretty toxic. And then I put on a liberal amount of glue onto both fittings. Sometimes, as you can see, a little bit too liberal amount of glue. And then I hold them together for probably oh, around about 30 to 45 seconds. The shower's passed by the time the drains were all glued up and I moved on down to the radial flow settler and glued the fitting on to the intake pipe that took the waste from the fish tank into the radial flow settler. 
After that was finished, I nipped around the other side and glued on the valve to the drain fitting that takes all the waste out of the radial flow settler. And then it was time to move on to connecting the fish tank to the radial flow settler itself. Rightio folks, you might be able to tell we've got a bit of a problem here if you can see that level. But that is the amount of space I have to put one of these cuffs. Uh, never fear though, because I am the king of scrounging and saving. So I have loads of pipe left over and it's easy enough for me, actually we'll do this on here, to swap over this top section just by undoing the valve itself, taking off this fitting here, popping on this one here, adding a o-ring to help make the um, seal watertight and pop on the valve again. So we're not going to get the valve handle all the way around to the front, but I'm fine with that. And just um, open it off to the side. It will mean it won't be in the walkway, so that's probably a good thing. So just try and balance that on there. That looks roughly level there, so I have more than enough room to put this cuff on here. I might as well mark this pipe here for cutting. And we might take it off there. So then all I need to do, once we've cut that off, just glue a little bit of pipe in there and we should be right to go. So I will take this up to the saw under the house, actually I can take the whole thing up and chop it off. So there we go, nice shorter pipe. And now all we need to do, I think this is the right, I've basically measured in 30 mils and the difference and everything. And I think, we put the level up the right way. Yeah, when those two are touching like that, we're pretty much well level. So I know that this pipe will go in a little bit further when we glue it. So there's no drama there. We'll glue this one in now. First of all, I should probably make sure that is dry because we just had another shower. Prime this lower section here. It's pretty easy to see which section you've primed because it basically cleans the pipe. Now the glue. So I've had the uh, RAF or Royal Australian Air Force planes flying over all morning. Hopefully it doesn't get too loud there. Push this down and basically hold for a little while. Now, fit on the cuff. Just like to undo these screws all the way. Pretty easy to work on though. Even though they're designed for a smaller pipe. I think that's pretty much all it. Working on this one and needs to come up a fair way, but I already knew that. It does help if you lubricate them a bit as well. So what we've done is we've got to, given it a little bit of an incline on this side here, just to allow for any settling of the tank. I can always come back and adjust this anyway, so it's no huge drama. Now I'll just tighten these guys up. Might tighten them up around that side so they don't grab on anyone as they walk by. As I previously mentioned, I'm not working on a flat level plane here, so there is a little bit of um, skew iffiness. And as you can see, these rubber cuffs allow for a little bit of flex in the actual uh, pipe itself. It's actually canted off a little bit to the right down there. So that's another uh, reason I like using these guys. Everything doesn't have to meet up perfectly. Now we're going to get on to plumbing the radial flow settler to the moving bed bioreactor. Just a bit of a tip about preparing pipe for the uni seals. There's a link to my website that goes through it in more depth. But basically what you want to do with these larger ones is create a bit of a large bevel around the edge. Just helps to get it started off. And on these smaller ones, I don't know if you can make it off. It doesn't have to be as pronounced. I find just as long as you take off that sharp um, rim, anything from a half inch, which is 15 mil, up to about 32 mil, which is inch and a quarter, can be pretty much all started off with just a small little nick off that sharp edge there. Don't forget to check out my page for a more in-depth explanation and also pick up a couple of uni seals if you're um, in the market for some while you're there. So I've got a section of timber in there and I've lubed up the uni seal with a little bit of dishwashing liquid and got the end cap on again. Hopefully it'll start off fairly easy. Through we go. Now this one here needs to have a fitting on the inside so it needs at least 30 mil coming through. And I think that is pretty much all it. So because we've got that section of pipe in there, I'm just going to hang it over the edge there. And I've also grabbed just a little bit more dishwashing 
detergent. Pop that there, put my brace timber inside. This one here is a bit longer because it needs to uh, reach over into the sump tank and should be fairly easy to start off because it's got a um, larger bevel on it. And again, we just want about 30 mil or an inch and a quarter on the inside, just enough to take a fitting. And last but not least, the drain valve for the base of the moving bed bio, and that just goes in easy as. Now we'll um, set these up in situ. So now we'll disconnect these guys before we put any drain fittings in. So these rubber cuffs again, pretty easy to put on. There we go, that's one side. And now the next side, there we go. And it's as easy as just doing up the clamps and we're right to go. I dare say we're gonna get some water in this system today. The next jobby on the cards was to plumb up the internal pipe work for the radial flow settler bleed off line. I used Teflon tape around the pipe, pushed it on, drilled a hole through the fitting and the pipe and put a 316 stainless steel screw in there to create an air and watertight seal. I won't talk about the outside fitting, we'll get into that in a minute. And then after that we moved on to the moving bed bioreactor and I pretty much will use the same method to attach the little drain fitting down the bottom there. That is if you can see past my balding head. And then that was pretty much all it. So there we go, folks, she's all plumbed up. Now we've just got to look after this drain and just to show you the lids now fit nice and firmly after I trimmed off those fatter bits on the inside. Now the drain system here is going to be pretty basic. I'll just pull my mock up apart. We have a twin glued 45 that's been reclaimed off another system. So what I'll end up doing is wrapping this with Teflon and screwing it on. But we're just going to do a quick test today and that goes on there. Then we have a 45 that comes down here. You can spin that round a bit. Make sure it's all nice and tight. And this bit of pipe delivers the water down into what will end up being a um, solids fine filter down in there that we'll bring down eventually. So after all the holes were drilled, pipe was inserted, we ran an electrical cord up over the top of that middle arch there and it's um, just connected to the pump in a little waterproof box down there so we won't have any issues if we have any more rain. The tanks, drums and sump have also been filled so we're just checking for leaks pretty much well now and I thought what we'd do is turn the pump on and see if we can hear any water. Yay, water! So I've already uh, done a bit of a wet run folks because I had one or two issues I wanted to iron out so as you can see, we've just got a makeshift inlet here and also a makeshift solids lifting outlet. I just wanted it to um, grab the water from the bottom uh, just in case any little bits of solid do fall out in there. It just helps to bring them along. From there, we have the pipe work going into the radial flow settler. It is holding up fine. No leaks there whatsoever. Just a little bit of a bucket lid over the top of this. And the radial flow settler isn't set up yet. Um, as I said in an earlier video, I think, um, stilling well from the existing system will come down here because we're saving all the pennies we can. Don't want to spend on stuff I don't have to. And the water from there, watertight through the uni seal and that little cuff there into the moving bed biofilter, which also too has no pipe work at the moment, at the top anyway. That will be worked out during the week and you'll see that in another video. And just here we have the inlet into the sump tank and there is no sealant on there whatsoever. It's not leaking, um, they're fairly watertight, they're jammed in there, but yeah, I will wrap some Teflon over them down the line. And I may do the same here with the little radial flow settler overflow. The pump down in there is an older Sun Sun I have. The, those pumps just keep working. I don't think I've had one burnout yet, knock on wood. And yeah, it's just going to run the system just so we, we can see if there's any leaks. Now I did have one leak, actually I had two leaks. This fitting here isn't the original one I put in there. Basically I stuffed up, I was in a bit of a rush this morning and I stuffed up the glue job. So I substituted some other components. There was too many holes in there and guess what? It sprung a leak. So I went back to the original fitting and luckily enough these valves, you can pull them apart. So I pulled it apart, took off the bit I didn't want, put on the bit that I did want and just came down here and zapped out the old fitting and popped in the new one and she is working absolutely fine. No leaks there whatsoever. Though that water is just left over from before. 
So there you go, folks, a lot longer video than I normally do, but there was a lot to get in there. I had ended up doing it over three days as I got time around family things and work, other work I've got to do as well to pay the bills. So yeah, next video won't be as long as this one. So the next video will be looking at the plumbing for the settler and also the moving bed bioreactor, as well as the solids lifting outlet. And yeah, we might uh, get one of the beds up and running as well. Now, I really would like to thank you folks who do come along every week and I thumb up the video and also leave your comments down below. I really enjoy getting back to you folks and chatting to you down there when I have the time. Huge thanks as well to those folks who are supporting the channel by buying our online aquaponics beginners guide and also supporting us through the Farm Your Own Yard and YouTube membership platforms. Thank you very much, folks. The YouTube well has dried up for me over the last couple of months. So yeah, any revenue I get through there, I really do appreciate. And the store as well. All those links are down in the description. One might pop up here. But I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you folks are well and happy in your own gardens and aquaponics systems are booming. And I'll catch you next vid. Cheers, folks, and take it easy.